every morning, every night, we repeat that chant on goodwill, limitless goodwill for ourselves and all other beings. And there's a reason we do it so often. It's part of our motivation. It's why we practice. We want to find true happiness. We want to make sure that we act on the intention that we don't want to harm anybody in the course of finding that happiness. Both because we realize that if our happiness depends on somebody else's suffering, it's not going to last. They'll do what they can to destroy it. And that simple quality of sympathy. You see someone else suffering and it, it's painful. But developing the quality of goodwill for everybody, that takes work. Because there are some people that we don't care about, some people we actually actively dislike. And we have to sit down and think about why we might want to have goodwill for those people, for those beings. First, the quality of goodwill itself. There are three places in the canon where the Buddha talks about what you might call metta phrases, phrases for directing thoughts of goodwill. One is that set that we chant, may all living beings be happy, free from stress and pain, free from animosity, free from oppression, free from trouble. May they look after themselves with ease. Notice that last statement, may they look after themselves with ease. In other words, we're not saying that we're going to be there for them all the time. And most beings would be happy, happier knowing that they could depend on themselves rather than having to depend on others. I once heard a Dharma teacher say that he wouldn't want to live in a world where there was no suffering because then he wouldn't be able to express his compassion. Which, when you think about it, is an extremely selfish wish. You need other people to suffer so you can feel good about expressing your compassion. The best attitude to have is, may all beings be happy. May they be able to look after themselves with ease. That way they can have the happiness of independence, self-reliance. Another, another set of phrases is in the Garnaniyameta Sutta, the one we chanted last night. And part of it says, in addition to saying, may all beings be happy at heart, whether they're long or short, big or little, strong or weak. And it goes on to say, may no one harm anyone else or despise anyone else or wish them harm. So you're not only saying, may they be happy, but may they also avoid the actions that would lead to bad karma, to their own unhappiness. So you're realizing that the principle of happiness here has to depend on action. For people to find true happiness, they're going to have to understand the causes for happiness and act on them. So again, it's not like you're going to be there for them all the time. You're hoping that people will wise up. And the passage goes on to say, when you're practicing this, you want to protect this attitude in the same way that a mother would protect her only child. Because some people misread that, thinking that you're supposed to have this attitude of a mother to her only child to all beings. That's not what the Buddha is saying, is you try to protect your goodwill as a mother would protect her only child, looking after it all the time, making sure that it doesn't waver. Because again, you don't want to harm anybody, and it's usually during those little waverings that the, the harm happens. So you do what you can to protect this attitude. And finally, there's another passage where the, the Buddha taught some monks a chant to spread goodwill to all snakes and other creeping things. The story goes that there was a monk who was meditating and was bitten by a snake and died. The monks reported this to the Buddha, and the Buddha said, you know, if that monk had spread goodwill to all four great families of snakes, that snake wouldn't have bitten him. So then he teaches the, a chant for wishing 
happiness to all snakes, and then it goes from there to all footless beings, two-footed beings, four-footed beings, many-footed beings. May all beings, whether they have no feet or two feet or four feet or many feet, meet with happiness, be free from suffering. And then it goes and lists all kinds of creeping things, rats, snakes, scorpions, lizards. May they all be happy, may, may they meet with good fortune, and may they go away. In other words, realizing that living together is difficult. John Fuhr once had a snake move into his room one time. And so for three days they lived together, and he was very careful not to startle the snake or scare the snake. And then finally on the third day he was sitting in meditation he said, addressed the snake quietly in his mind, said, look, it's not that I don't like you or have any bad feelings for you, but our minds work in different ways. It would be very easy for there to be a misunderstanding. There are lots of places out in the woods where you can live. It spread goodwill to the snake and the snake left. What these different ways of expressing goodwill show is that goodwill is not necessarily a quality of loving kindness. You're not there to cherish these beings or to look after them. You wish them well, sometimes realizing that the best thing for everybody would be to live separately, with each understanding the causes for happiness and each being able to look after him or herself with ease. This is the kind of attitude you can have to everybody. If we were told to love everybody and to want to be kind to everybody, look after them. There are a lot of people out there who are pretty unlovable. And the Buddha's not asking you to love them, just wish them well. May they be happy. May they understand the causes for happiness. May they look after themselves with ease. The Buddha recommends that you develop these attitudes in two situations. One is when you are being harmed by other people. You try to develop an attitude of goodwill for those people, and then starting with those people, spreading out to the whole universe of beings, trying to make your mind as large as the river Ganges or as large as the earth. In other words, larger than the harm they're doing to you. May they be happy. May they stop causing suffering. May they stop suffering themselves. This is so that you don't react in unskillful ways to their harm. Another time the Buddha said to develop this attitude of infinite goodwill is when you realize that you've harmed others. He says you realize that getting tied up in remorse is not going to undo the harm, so that's no help. And if you tie yourself up in remorse, it's very easy for you to weaken yourself and, as a result, end up doing harm to others. So you simply note the fact that that was a mistake, and then you wish that person well, and then you wish all beings well, as a way of helping to guarantee that you would never again intentionally try to cause harm. And then you have to act on it. You can't just stop with that wish and then pretend that you've taken care of everything. You've got to look at the situations in which you live. Where do you tend to cause harm? Is it through your words? Is it through your actions? How can you act in different ways? How can you speak in different ways? In other words, try to be a fair judge of your actions. And if you see that your instinctive way of reacting in a situation is unskillful, sit down and ask yourself, well, the next time that situation comes, what would be a more skillful way of handling this? This fits, this fits in with the Buddha's teachings on preventing unskillful states from arising. And these are times when you really do have to think about the past and think about the future, i.e., where you've made a mistake in the past and what you can do in the future not to repeat it. It's the same principle we have with the precepts. Once you know that you're not going to kill anything, you have to sit down and look at your house. How can you arrange things in your house so that you're not attracting ants or cockroaches or whatever? In other words, you don't treat these things as a, pro as a surprise when they happen. These are things you can anticipate. And so it's a useful exercise to sit down and look at your life and figure out in what ways can you be less harmful. When situation X arises, what can you do 
not to respond in your old, unskillful ways. This teaches you to be meticulous, scrupulous in following that desire to wish all beings happiness, true happiness. In other words, it's not just a floating sort of general idea. You have to apply it to the nitty-gritty of all your interactions with others. And this way your goodwill becomes honest, and it actually does have an impact, which is why we do it to begin with, is to make sure that it does animate our thoughts, our words, our deeds. As the Buddha said, the development of goodwill is one of the causes for true happiness. Happiness is good for everybody, and that kind of happiness is really special. All too often the pleasures of the world require that if somebody's gaining them, other people have to lose something. But with this cause for happiness, everybody gains. So develop it as much as you can.